Hi everyone, welcome to week two of the Sandhill Sling Sew Along. I'm super excited to get started today. Um, we're gonna be working on view A front pocket, view B front pocket, and the interior pocket. So a lot of pockets, all the pockets, and it's gonna be fun. Um, I'm gonna hopefully walk you through a few of the different options of different hardwares. If you have some on hand that you wanna try and use, we'll kinda of go over some great substitutes for that, and um, let's get going. Okay, so we're ready to start on view A, um, making the front pocket for view A. What I like to do is just grab the pieces that I'm going to need. Um, I've got this zipper pocket bottom piece. There's an exterior fabric and a lining. I've got one of the main panels, exterior main panels. I've got the zipper pocket top, the zipper cover, which is optional. Um, I think if you look back on week one, I kind of show you where that is on the bag. And the 10 inch zipper, that's what we have for that. And We'll get started by grabbing the zipper pocket bottom pieces and the exterior fabric, the lining fabric over there. And we're going to place the zipper uh, right side down along the top edge. Now, if you have a directional fabric here, um, that meaning like if the print goes a certain way, either up or downward, just make sure that you're putting the zipper on this top edge. So that is going to be aligned to there, and then we are going to base that in place right along that edge. I'm just going to zip, clip mine here. Okay, so I've got my zipper right side down on that exterior fabric along the top edge, aligned to the top edge there, and um, the zipper pull is at the left there. And I'm just going to go ahead and baste it in place. I've got a narrow foot on my machine. This is about a quarter inch um, or you can put on your zipper foot. And next we're going to place the lining piece right side down on top, aligning it to that top edge. And we're going to go ahead and sew, um, this time it's with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. It's just to get it nice and snug to those zipper teeth um, on this handbag zipper. Okay, once that's sewn across that edge, we're gonna open up these pieces and press them away from the zipper. And we're going to align those um, wrong side together. So those bottom edges will match. And then you've got your zipper across the top here. And we're just gonna press it really well and then we'll top stitch. All right, now we're ready for the zipper cover piece and you're gonna press it in half the long way, um, wrong side together. So you're gonna have a nice little long strip, fold it in half. And then we're gonna place that with the raw edges aligned to the top of that zipper. And I'm just gonna clip it in place. And we'll take it over to the machine and baste it. Okay, now we're ready for the zipper pocket top. To go on and we're going to place it right side down meeting that raw edge again and we're going to sew using a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance and again if you're using a directional print just be aware of how you're placing that you're going to want it just you could just test it and open it up to see if it looks right we'll clip it pin it and then we're going to sew it in place with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance Okay, so that's sewn, and then we're just going to press that up and away from the edge there. Once that's pressed, we'll go ahead and top stitch along that edge right next to the fold. Okay, so now we've got everything all pressed and top stitched, and then we're going to just need to trim this panel that we made um, to the height of 12 inches. So these the main exterior panel that you already had cut is going to match that. They're going to be um, even on both ends. So I'm just going to get that trimmed off. Okay, and then we're going to open the zipper halfway. Um, and what I like to do, since we are using a longer zipper tape, and this would be for a zipper by the yard as well, you're going to want to take it over to your machine and just base that in place along each of these edges. 
So that's gonna hold that in place and keep you from pulling the zipper off by accident, which is always no fun. Okay, so I have those basted in place along the edge there. That'll keep everything aligned and the zipper all together. And what we're gonna do next is you're gonna place this completed zipper assembly and place it right side up directly on top of that main panel. And you're just gonna align all those edges and since we have it trimmed to the same size, everything should match up. Okay, so there's two steps left here. We're going to go ahead and top stitch again right over the previous top stitching and that's gonna join that assembled zipper panel to the main exterior panel. So when you open that zipper up, you're not gonna have a cavity up top here and it's gonna be a nice finished edge. And then um, after that is top stitched, then we're going to go ahead and baste along the entire perimeter. And what I like to do, since we are going to be rounding the corners in the next step, I like to just go ahead and when I'm basting, I just kind of do a gradual curve. Since it's basting stitches, you can always take it out if they end up showing on your exterior when everything is sewn. But if you do just a gradual curve around each corner, it's kind of one less little fiddly step and makes it go a little quicker. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and top stitch right over that existing top stitching. I like to put my needle down into the fabric, lift the presser foot, and then just slide that zipper over once I get to it, and then I can continue on the rest of the way. Okay, so that's all joined, and then we're going to baste all around the perimeter. And like I said before, when I get to these corners, I just kind of do a gradual curve. Okay, so that's it for view A for the zipper front pocket. Okay, so we're ready to make the pocket for view B, and I'm gonna walk through a couple of the different options as far as uh, the closure for the pocket flap itself. Um, both of these instructions are in the pattern. Um, the first option is a magnetic snap. Um, this is a 14 millimeter. You could probably use an 18 millimeter here, but I'll show the 14 millimeter. And then the other option is the metal snap. Size 24 is what I use. So I'll first walk you through the pocket with the magnetic snap option. Okay, so I'm gonna walk you through the steps for the magnetic snap. And we've got one front pocket piece with interfacing and one without. So we're gonna grab the one with the interfacing. We're gonna mark the snap placement for that. Um, just gonna flip it over to the wrong side. And on the center here, I'm gonna mark it one and an eighth inch down from that top edge. And then I'm gonna take my washer and mark where the prongs go. And then I go ahead and cut where those markings are. Just a little snip. And then I'm gonna push the prongs through those slits from the front, coming out the back. And then I like to put a couple little slits into a little scrap of fusible fleece. Gives it a little extra padding and cush. And then I'll take my washer, slide those over the prongs, and then I bend the prongs out to the sides. You can bend them in. I usually bend them out. I haven't had a problem either way. And I use the side of my scissors to kind of Help me get those over. And then you can additionally place another scrap of interfacing um, over the top and fuse that in place. Okay, so now we've got the magnetic snap half of it installed and we're gonna finish making this bottom half of the front pocket. And we'll just place the other piece right side down on top and then we're gonna sew. We're gonna leave an opening on the bottom edge here. We'll just sew along the whole perimeter with a half inch seam allowance, leaving an opening at the bottom. And then I'll go ahead and clip these corners. And then we'll take it over to the ironing board and we will 
turn it right side out and give it a good press. At the bottom opening edge, I just like to press that seam open first. And then we can turn it right side out. Okay, so we have the other half of the magnetic snap installed on the pocket flap, and we're going to place the other pocket flap piece right side down on top. And we're going to sew along the sides and bottom long edge and up the other side. And then I'll clip those corners. We'll take it over to the ironing board and turn it right side out. Okay, so the pocket flap is turned right side out and I pressed it and you can top stitch it along the edges and bottom here. I prefer to leave it untop stitched for some reason. Um, normally I'm a fan of top stitching but uh, on the, in this case I like the pocket flap without it but you can definitely go ahead and do that. Um, now we're going to take the main exterior piece right side up and we are going to place the front pocket with the magnetic snap um, facing up and that is three and a quarter inches from the top edge of the main exterior here. Okay so the front pocket is sewn on and we're going to attach the front pocket flap and we're going to place it so that the magnetic snap is facing up and that is three quarters of an inch from this top pocket edge. I'm just going to use my ruler and make a mark. And I'm going to align my raw edge of my pocket flap to that marking. And you're going to want it centered as best you can over this front pocket. And then I'll pin it in place and then we're going to baste it. Okay, and I baste it in place with a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, so now the pocket flap is basted in place and you're gonna bend it down so it's the two magnetic snaps are gonna align. And then you can press it along this edge here and then we'll top stitch through all the layers with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance from this folded edge. Now, if your pocket like doesn't seem to be aligning some maybe somehow you got a little bit of the um, measurements off or your cutting was a little off that's totally fine you can um, just take it back if if you don't feel like this placement looks right um, take it off just rip out those stitches and rebaste it and just till you get it right it's nothing like uh, set in stone it's not going to affect anything as long as it's you know centered on your um, main exterior here it's not going to affect anything so we'll go ahead and press that and then top stitch okay so my flap is pressed nicely and then i'm going to use a three eighths of an inch seam allowance and top stitch right across this pocket flap and we're uh, measuring from this folded edge three eighths from that folded edge there's view b with the magnetic snap option you're going to see that there's uh, maybe just aside from a few stray threads but that when you top stitch along the flap edge there, that's going to enclose that raw edge nicely. And so um, I just give it an overall press and starch, and we're all set to go with that version. Uh, next up is with the metal snap. So here's view B with the front pocket and flap, but this time I am going to be using the metal snap. Um, metal snap is my preferred closure for this bag. I just like how easy it is and how clean it looks and it's easy to use. So we'll start out by um, grabbing our front pocket pieces. And the first step is just to place them right sides together. And we're gonna sew along the whole perimeter, leaving about a three inch opening at the bottom edge. And we'll start by pressing this bottom seam open, the one with the opening that you left. That'll give you a nice crisp edge when you go to turn it right side out. Okay, and turn it right side out. Okay, 
Okay, so it's all pressed and we'll take it over to the machine and top stitch across this top edge. Okay, so here are the steps for the metal snap and I'm just gonna go over a few of the items that I use. Um, so I have this little cutting board that I use for um, when I'm going to set the snap. A hammer, a hole punch. This is a rotary hole punch. You can choose um, from different sizes. Um, and I've got the setting tools and usually some kind of marking tool and I use a seam gauge um, for marking. We'll get started. Um, I'm just going to finger press this in half to find the center. And I'm going to make a mark five eighths of an inch down from this top in the center there. I'll use my hole punch and I'm going to punch a hole through that. Okay, so then this is where um, this is where you put the post up through the back of the front pocket. And then this is the stud that goes over the top. And mine click in place. And then I use my cutting board as a little preventative to not damage my table. Well, sometimes I forget. But we're going to use this um, indented side and that rests right on the back side of this post here. And then there's this part of the setting tool. It's concave. That's where the stud will fit into. So I slip that over there and give it a few whacks. So it should feel secure. You shouldn't be able to fit like a fingernail underneath it. It shouldn't be wobbly. If it is, just go ahead and give it a few more taps. Um, don't be afraid to put some force into it. Okay, so now we're ready to make the pocket flap and it's sort of the same method. Um, place our pocket flap pieces right sides together. So along the sides and bottom edge, leaving this one long top edge open. Okay, so we'll take it over to the ironing board and turn it right side out and give it a good press. All right, so the pocket flap is pressed and you can choose to top stitch it along the sides and bottom edge. Um, I choose not to, it's just a preference. It doesn't really affect the um, function of the pocket flap at all. So top stitch if you want. If not, you can leave it non-top stitched. All right, so now we're going to place the front pocket on top of the main exterior piece and I'm just going to measure down uh, I believe it's three and a quarter inches from that top edge. I'll just draw a line with my chalk pencil. If I'm using light fabric I just use a mechanical pencil. Then I'll center the pocket with the snap facing up Making sure it's level and everything looks good along the sides. And then I'll pin it in place. Okay, so then I'm gonna top stitch the pocket in place. And I like to start with a tall, narrow triangle in each corner for reinforcement. Couple stitches over and then down. And again, I'll end with a small narrow triangle. Take a couple stitches over at the top here. Right, so we're ready to set the pocket flap in place. And if you're curious, um, I usually like to place the um, pocket flap with the interfacing down first um, so that it's on the outside. But if you get it mixed up and it ends up um, being on the wrong, the um, on interface piece, it's okay. It's not going to make enough of a difference to worry about. But I'm going to make a mark off of that top pocket edge, three quarters of an inch. And then I'll place the pocket flap down on that line and just center it over the pocket the best I can. 
and then I'm going to pin it in place and we're going to baste with a quarter inch seam allowance across that edge. Next I'll take it over to the ironing board and I'm going to press that flap down so that it covers part of that front pocket and press it really well on this top edge. You don't want to pull it too hard so that it starts tugging at this top edge just so it lays nice and flat. Okay so I've pressed it and now we'll take it over to the sewing machine and we're going to top stitch 3 eighths of an inch from this folded edge of the pocket flap. So 3 eighths of an inch all the way across. Okay, so we're ready to set the other half of the snap on the flap. And um, what I do really like about the metal snap is that it is pretty forgiving. If you have some adjustments off just a little bit, um, you can really set the snap wherever you'd like um, to make up for that. Um, again, you could use the measurement from the pattern, which is 5 eighths of an inch from the pocket flap edge, or I just like to feel um, through the fabric and make a mark where the um, where I could feel the stud from below. Like that. And then I'll go ahead and punch a hole. And I'll bring my cutting board over and I'll take the cap of the snap, push it through the front of the flap. And then this is the other side of the anvil. That's where the cap sits in. And then the socket goes on top. And this is the other half of the setting tool. It has that little outie part. <laughs> and that just situates in the little um, stem that's in there. And then you can give it a few taps. Again, just like with the bottom half of the snap, it shouldn't be wiggly. Um, you might be able to turn it a little bit, but it should be fairly tight and snug. And if it's not, again, go ahead and hit it a few more times. Um, don't be too afraid. But then your cap is all set. It snaps and snaps. Again, if you're off a little bit, um, this flap can be adjusted um, if you need to. When, once you've basted it in place, if you want to check to see how it looks, fold it over, and you want to adjust it from there, you can um, squid it around and just make it look how you want it. All right, so that is view B with a metal snap, and we're all set. Okay, so we're coming on to the home stretch of this week's steps, and we're going to work next on the interior pocket. Now, the interior pocket has a little bit of elastic at the top. Um, it just keeps everything nice and in place and I really like the way it works when I'm using my sling. So we're going to place our interior pocket pieces right sides together and we're going to sew along this top edge. Okay so the edge is sewn and then we're going to turn it so they are wrong sides together. And we're going to press along this top edge. All right, so this is all pressed, and if you have a quarter inch wide elastic, we're gonna sew with a half inch seam allowance from this top folded edge. That'll create a casing for your elastic to go through. I somehow misplaced my quarter inch elastic. And like I said, if you don't have a quarter inch, you can use something a little bit wider. This is a 3 eighths inch elastic. I'm just gonna do a little more than a half inch seam allowance. I'll probably do about a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance here. Okay, so that made the casing for the elastic, and I'm going to thread my elastic through that casing. First, I put on a safety pin, and then I'll start by threading it through that open end. And then I'll bring that edge fairly close to the elastic, and I'm just going to stitch that in place to hold it. Okay, so once we have the elastic tacked in place on the one end, we're going to pull on the other end of the elastic, the free end, until the pocket measures about seven inches across on this top edge. And so that's where I'm going to hold it in place, and I'm going to tack it in place again on this side. Okay, and then I can trim that excess elastic away. 
set that aside and there is my gathered top okay so next we're going to attach the interior pocket to one of the main panel lining pieces and we'll just go ahead and lay that aligned to the bottom edge here and if you'll notice you see that that's pulled in a little bit and that's totally okay but what you're going to do is you're going to start by basting it right along the edge and you'll align that baste it along here the bottom up the other side and just stretch it to meet that other side and then it'll kind of tug in and that's totally how you want it to be so we'll take that over to the sewing machine and baste that in place I do a little preemptive curve there because I know in the next step we're going to be trimming those corners right around them. So as we come up this side where the pocket is pulling because of the elastic, we just keep that aligned raw edges together. All right, so there is the interior pocket all attached. Okay, save the easiest step for last today. Um, that's just rounding the corners and make sure you grab your corner rounding template and I have usually prefer to use my dressmaking shears for this step. But we're just gonna round all the corners of the, both the exterior pieces and both lining pieces, each of the corners. And I forgot that I didn't mention, you can go ahead and trim off these little, trim off those ends. And don't worry about it, you've got your ends here safely securing that zipper in place. So just go ahead and trim those off and keep rounding. And sometimes I stack them, especially for the lining pieces. These bottom corners are pretty easy to stack. Okay, so that's both linings, both exteriors, all the corners rounded. Okay, so I just wanted to briefly walk through a couple more hardware options for this View B front patch pocket, um, just for the closure here. Um, so I mentioned in my blog post and in the first newsletter that you could substitute a turn lock or I have these really nice locks fasteners um, that could be substituted as well. And I have two videos. Um, I have my own video for installing a turn lock. I'll link that in the newsletter. And I have um, a link to where locks has their own video. And um, I think it's a good video. So it's, it's one I would recommend watching. Okay, so that's it for week two. Um, I think a lot of the most complicated options and steps are done. So yay for that. Um, we went over view A the zippered front pocket. I showed you both view B options with the magnetic snap and the metal snap. And then we made the interior pocket and attached it and then rounded all the corners of the pieces. So we should be all set with a lot of the exterior. So for next time, Week three, we're gonna go over assembling the whole exterior. We're gonna get the lining ready with the gusset attached. And um, I think that's it. We'll kind of go over some of the specifics then. Um, hope to see you next week. Bye.